guys and welcome to Life in Motion and welcome to my John Cooper Works. If you don't know me, my name's Jack and uh, make sure to subscribe to your future videos similar to this one. This car has now done 20,000 miles. Uh, as a disclaimer, I did buy it used from Mini Park Lane in London, so it did have five or 6,000 miles on it when I bought it. Uh, I've had it about a year and seven months, but I have done the majority of those 20,000 miles uh, myself. Um, I've been up and down the country now, I've been to the coast, went to my brother's wedding in it, um, but to be honest, the majority of those miles are to and from work. Um, I wanted to take this opportunity to explain to you a little bit more about what it's like to live with since I've done those kind of 20-ish thousand miles, so um, let's get stuck in. Right, let's start with the outside of the car, because I think it's so important to love the way it looks, and I love it. Um, it's not as angular as the uh, R56. The previous generation John Cooper X, which is a little bit more angular, a little bit more, I don't know, it just wasn't quite uh, as bubbly as this car. This is quite rounded, um, but it still carries that silhouette, that classic design of a Mini, which is great. Um, on the outside of the car, I've got things like the five spoke diamond cut alloys, 18 inches. I've got the red brake calipers. Uh, you'll see I've got the red bonnet stripes as well. Uh, working towards the back of the car, I've got the John Cooper Works Pro Tuning Exhaust. I've got the upgraded uh, Union Jack style rear tail lights. Uh, also, lights at the front, I've got those kind of LED ones, which looks great. Um, sunroof, you know, the car is kind of full to the works. I would actually go kind of explain this car has basically got every single option you can get on a Mini. Bar, I think, an automatic gearbox, there is no nothing else you can get on this car, so it's absolutely perfect. Head up display, it parks itself, uh, rear camera, you know, it's got the works. In the UK, uh, a mini, a manual John Cooper works starts just under £26,000, but this one, new, was thirty-two and a bit thousand pounds That's ridiculous. Fortunately, I bought it used, so I did take a big saving on that, but still, £32,000 for a mini is nuts. If you got to look at Auto Trade at the moment, you can see so many cars that you can get for £32,000, a lot less. Um, it just depends on what you like, but as a super mini, as like a hot hatch, this is one of the best, if not for my opinion, I think it's the best in its class. To clear something up straight away, the Valvetronic exhaust is something that I've got on this car, but it's a factory provided option. It's not an accessory, uh, it's something you can choose as factory. It's a lot of money, it's like over a thousand pounds, but it has a little valve in it that opens. Uh, it's a disclaimer saying that uh, you shouldn't really use it on the road, it's only for track use, but I'm just gonna shut up, listen, listen to how loud it is. It's amazing, in sport mode it crackles pops all the time, it's absolutely ridiculous. Let me just give it a bit more of a, a squeeze. <laughs> it's so much fun this car. Uh, the the Valvetronic exhaust is something that I think gives such a personality to the car. I think this car, with its exhaust, just gives such a good presence. So listen to this again, I'll, I'll kick down. It's ridiculous, it's so loud, it's awesome. And that's where I think this car gets so much character. Don't get me wrong, the standard one is brilliant, but... Come on. How can you not think this is absolutely awesome? This car's all... <laughs> Let me put the windows up so I can talk to you a bit better. So this car's also got rev matching, so if I change down, you can hear it blips the throttle. So it makes just the key change a little bit nicer, and also you hear those crackles and pops all the time, which is awesome. On the steering, now I've got active dampers in this car, so when I put it in sport mode, they stiffen up, they make the ride quality a little bit stiffer and make the ha car handle a little bit better. Also in sport mode, it means that the, the standard stuff really, the throttle response is quicker, the steering's a little bit heavier uh, and more direct as it were. Um, now, I wouldn't say the steering is the best in this car. It's a little bit woolly. You don't have much kind of communication between the wheels and the steering wheel. Um, I had a 1998 Mini Cooper, so a classic. And pow no power steering, uh, four gears. It was it was a true Mini classic. And um, that had a lot more communication through the wheel. But I expected to because it didn't have any power steering. Um, I don't really mind. It's still pretty playful. And if you want to in sport mode, I think it's absolutely fine. So this car's got a two litre, four cylinder engine, turbo, producing 228 brake horsepower. Uh, it goes from 0 to 60 with the manual gearbox in 6.3 seconds, uh, up to a top speed of 145, 155, I don't know, it's limited, but it goes pretty, pretty quick indeed. 
Usability is such an important part of a car, the kind of the day-to-day -day running. That's basically where I said, as I said earlier, where I do most of my miles, to and from work. Um, it's not, you know, ragging it around in sport mode, uh, getting 20 miles to the gallon. Um, I want that user-friendliness of a car. Uh, and so, on the day-to-day, -day, I get around about 320 miles out of tank, maybe. Um, it averages around about 30 to 33 miles per gallon, depends on how you kind of drive and what your journey is on day to day. Uh, inside I've got plenty of little cubby holes, I never seem to run out of space as it were, the boot is you know, perfectly fine, I haven't got a child, I have a dog, but I use another car for that, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I've got loads of different cubby holes to put everything, which is great. Um, also in the cabin as well, it's nice and spacious, I don't feel cramped. Um, obviously I, had a, I have actually had a 13 play Mini Cooper, again similar design, it wasn't cramped. My original Mini actually wasn't that cramped either, so they kept that ability to make the car feel big inside, even though it's not a big car. It's not really a Mini Mini anymore, but a Mini I don't think stands for small. I think it just stands for the brand, you know, the Mini as a brand, not Mini as a size of car, uh, even though originally they weren't Mini. So what's this car like on a long distance journey? Well, absolutely fine. I've got these really supportive bucket seats, which are great. I have got the bigger 18 inch optional alloys, which, you know, does hurt the ride a little bit, and run flats. I'll get into those in a second. But yeah, it rides absolutely fine. Uh, when you're in the kind of eco mode, I think that's where it's most comfortable. Uh, so the active dampeners obviously dampen, uh, what, more or less? Just makes it more comfortable, whatever. How that ever works, I do not know. I'm not very technical. Um, so yeah, I think it's great. It's not an A3, it's not an A-Glass or a Golf or whatever you may be uh, in their kind of comfortable settings, but it's not supposed to be. It's supposed to still have that kind of rough go-karty feel that a Mini has. Uh, and I think, <laughs> see that sounds really funny again. If you've been a Mini owner before, then you'll know what it's like. Uh, and if you drive a Mini, then you'll understand what it's like. So actually I don't think there's many complaints about kind of the quality of the ride. with kind of my top tips of what I think about this car um, and what you should account for. Number one, I think you should get the TLC pack. If you can try and find with a car with a TLC pack, it gives you servicing for like five years, which means you don't have to pay for a service. Uh, if you do a lot of miles, then maybe you won't quite benefit from it as much as others, but I would definitely account for that. Number two, I try and avoid run flats if you can. So I did say I mentioned it uh, earlier. Um, I've gone through three tyres and one alloy with this car. Admittedly, yes, it matters how you drive, where you drive, but you know they don't hold up very well against potholes. And actually, it's there was one, there was two in a similar type of location but on different roads, and one about 40 miles from my house. So I don't think again they don't matter as much where they are. I just think they haven't got as as strong as normal tyres. So that's number two. Number three, I would probably go for the manual gearbox. I think you get a little bit more control, you have a little bit more play with it, and it's I probably a lot of people say it's a little bit more like what a Mini should be. Uh, the automatic gearbox is fine, actually, if you're going from day to day. I'd probably just get a Cooper S and get an automatic. Um, but if you're getting a John Cooper works, get a manual. Number four, try and find a car with a Valtronic Pro Tuning Exhaust. Oh my God, it's just so good. Honestly, you, you will never regret that decision. Um, I know it's a lot of money, and I understand that a lot of things come over that, but if you can afford it, if you can find a car with it, just go for it, because honestly, it's so loud, it makes everything better, and just the experience of owning a Mini, just so cool. Guys, if you enjoyed this video of kind of a 20,000 mile update and a bit of what it's like to live with, with the Mini John Cooper Works, then make sure to give it a like so other people can find the video. Don't forget to subscribe to see future videos like this one. But for now, I'll see you soon. I